Welcome everyone to the 2020 Highlands College Commencement Ceremony. Thank you so much for joining us. We know graduates have family and friends watching from across the country. Before we jump into the graduation ceremony, we wanted to share with you what Highlands College is all about. Every part of it is supernatural. The people that God's brought us to pull this vision off, the building that God has provided, every part of it is a miracle. It's funny because I dream about this and think about this nonstop. Our church releasing into God's harvest field that is very ripe, thousands and thousands of young workers. I can see it in my mind and I can imagine the impact that it's gonna make. It's exciting. These past few years of accreditation have been an incredible journey of building inside Highlands College the right degree and the team around that and the faculty. It's incredible to see the growth and the fruit from that. We're getting ready to see the building project at Grandview come to life. By the fall of 21, we'll be ready for students to go to class there and have their laboratories and practicums there and just really to experience the student life environment the building will create around the vision that we know God had in store all along. It's just incredible. You know, the part of this that we didn't plan was this Grandview facility. And of course, in order to do anything uh, in the education space, you really have to have a great facility to do it in. And God brought us this building, and now we have this opportunity to, you know, to reshape it into one of the finest learning institutions in the world. Something that will not only be functional and do its job, but also is attractive so that the world can see, hey, we're not, we're not kidding around here. We're doing something that's gonna raise up some of the finest Christian leaders in the world. Really a first of its kind Christian university and academy setting where 100% of the people who come have only one intent, and that is to go out into the harvest field as full-time ministers of the gospel of Jesus. You know, no matter how great a vision is, you have to have a team to pull it together from our chancellor and our board members, also our donors who are giving generously to the vision of Highlands College. I feel like it's a privilege to get to be part of what's happening because it's so big. Where we're going is extraordinary. With this academy model that we're setting up, we're gonna be in a position to attract some of the best and brightest young people, and we're gonna be able to train and equip them like no one's ever done. I'm excited about being able to put more boots on the ground, um, seeing students come in and being able to freely uh, pursue God's call for their lives and see the world literally change one student at a time, one calling at a time. It's exciting to see uh, all that's on paper and exciting to see what God's gonna do beyond that. Only together can we see this vision come to life and it's just an incredible honor to be a part of that team along with each and every one of you seeing God do something great. At Highlands College, it may be the most amazing opportunity we've ever had to impact the entire planet. If you're gonna make a bet on something, bet on the future, bet on young people, and bet on education. And if we get those three things right, we know that in our lifetime, we can leave the impact that God really wanted us to leave. The harvest is plentiful. The labors are a few. Ask the Lord of the harvest to send forth more workers into the harvest field. And I really believe this is gonna be our legacy as a church. It's so exciting to see the vision of Highlands College being fulfilled through days like today. Our graduates are educated, equipped, and empowered to make a difference around the world. 
There are countless stories about how our trained students are making an internal impact, but here is one example of how Highlands College prepared two students to help launch a brand new ARC Church in Denver, Colorado. So I decided to come to Highlands College after graduating from a four-year university. I knew after attending a preview day that summer that there was no better place to learn from some of the best leaders in the world and get the hands-on training that I need to be in full-time ministry. My youth pastor had actually graduated from Highlands College and was telling me a little bit about it. And so I came and decided to visit on one random preview day in the middle of summer. And from the second I walked into the doors, I knew that this was gonna be the place for me. From day one, you walk into the classroom, you're learning either from a Highlands College perspective or from a classroom perspective in um, practicums and then you're putting whatever you're learning into play. Highlands College did an amazing job at putting us in environments constantly week after week to be filled up spiritually to be hearing from amazing leaders. I'm so thankful for Highlands College because I met my wife. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, but really, it gave me the chance and the opportunity to learn, like, this is what the background to the Bible is. This is all the stuff that I didn't know I needed to know myself, and I can effectively teach it to others now. It's not about staying at Highlands College, but it's about being sent out. And I think we can both say that we feel 100% prepared to be placed and be sent out into the world to build the local church. So my last semester of Highlands College, Pastor Josh Anderson came and spoke at one of our chapels, but it wasn't until afterwards that we got to talk to him and his wife, Becca, and we actually got to go visit a couple weeks later and, and visit Denver and they were speaking life into us and we knew this was a place that we were going to get to go and learn and grow and experience life and a, a life-giving community. And we are so excited to say we get to be a part of Season Church Launch in Denver, Colorado. Highlands College created a one-of-a-kind education and training experience to prepare students to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We offer a holistic training approach focused on developing a healthy mind, body, soul, and spirit. One way this happens is through Highlands College small groups, where mentors disciple our students to become leaders of character. Uh, my name is Devin Geary, and I'm a fourth semester at Highlands College. I never really understood the impact of small groups until I got into this HC small group. I love it. They've really, like everybody's become family. It really challenged me to get out of my comfort zone, to really try to get to know people, to not isolate myself. That's naturally what I do. It takes you out of that big group, and then it gives you a family. Like, it gives you people that you can talk to about anything, that you can hang out at any time, a call on when you really don't know what else to do, what next step to take. You're just excited to go. You're excited to be around the people. You're excited to eat whatever food is there because it's free food. Who doesn't love free food? It taps into the deeper parts of your life and it really tries to pull things out and like make you better, pull things out that maybe you never even realized. It just makes life better when you have people around you that love you, that care about you, that want to see you succeed, that want to see you grow with Jesus. As we all know, COVID-19 resulted in this semester looking a little different than it normally does. We shifted our entire holistic training approach to a virtual experience. Over the last several weeks, our students have poured themselves into academics, strengthening relationships with each other, and growing in their relationship with God. Hey y'all, my name's Mira, and I'm coming to you live from Birmingham, Alabama. Today, I am currently on a Zoom call with some of my good friends who I get to serve at our Greystone campus with. Say what up, Greystone! Hey everyone, it's Nico. I'm currently at home in Montgomery, Alabama, and I'm getting ready to do my first workout. Hey guys, Edgar Reyes here from Houston, Texas, checking in from our first online chapel. What's up Highlands College? It is so great to be with you guys today. Hey guys, my name's Kiri and I'm in Seattle watching my class online. Hey, see, this is Katie and I'm here in Fairhope, Alabama. And today is our first time meeting as a practicum virtually. So say hey to Pac. Hey, this is Jay Slaughter. I'm coming at you from Southeast Texas and I'm here with... Hey, I'm Alyssa Lyons and we are having our first day of online practice. He lists out several shortcuts in this particular chapter. Hey y'all, my name is Karis and I'm here in Raleigh, North Carolina and the Commerce and Events Practicum just got finished with their first online class. Say hey everyone! There is nothing like being together face to face. 
but we believe the HE family bond is stronger than ever before. Again, we thank you for joining the 2020 Highlands College Commencement Ceremony. Yo, 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 HC! Family! Yo, 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 yo! HC! Family! Yo, 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 yo! HC! HC!
Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Mark Pettis, and I have the honor of serving as the president of Highlands College. And on behalf of our chancellor, Pastor Chris Hodges, and our board of directors, it is my privilege to welcome you to the graduation ceremony celebrating the class of December 2019 and spring 2020. At Highlands College, our mission is rooted in Luke 10:2, that says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. And our passion is to be the answer to that prayer, to send workers into the harvest field prepared to make a difference. Simply put, we exist to supply the Great Commission. This is what we are here to celebrate today. Graduates who have applied themselves in the academic classroom, who spent countless hours learning ministry hands-on, who have matured in their character, and most importantly, who have grown in their love and devotion to Jesus Christ. And these graduates are now ready to step into the harvest field and live out the call of God on their life. Now in our wildest dreams, we never expected that the last nine weeks of this semester would go the way they did, or that our ceremony today would be a virtual one. Graduates, we wish we could all be here in the same room together in person today. And we miss each of you guys very much. But in the middle of so much uncertainty, never have I been more certain of a couple of things. God's plans for this college are bigger than we dreamed, and God's call on your life, graduates, is more significant than we could have imagined. The world is hurting. The world needs Jesus. Now's our time. Students, we are so proud of you. We can't wait to hear stories for decades to come of eternal impact through your life. I also want to honor today each family member and friend that has joined us. Thank you so much for your love and support of these graduates. Thank you for allowing us the honor of partnering with you over the last two years. I also want to honor our staff, our faculty, our preceptors and small group leaders. Thank you for selflessly giving of your time, energy and resources to develop these students to be world changers. Now, normally, this will be the moment that we ask each of you graduates to join us and to walk into the room. And we ask each of you in the audience to stand. But since we can't do that in this room, I would love to ask you right there where you are, in the room you're in, where you are to stand. Stand to your feet as we get ready to pray and invite God's presence in this moment. Then join us as we sing one song of worship, as we make our focus today on the one who makes all of this possible. Join me in prayer. God, we love you today. We thank you for who you are, for what you've done in our lives. We thank you for all of these graduates today. Holy Spirit, come make your presence known in this ceremony. We give you all honor and all glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Just one touch, my eyes will 
Father, we thank you for bringing us to this moment of celebration today. We give you glory for everything you have done in and through us as we reflect upon our journey in Highlands College. And today we invite in your presence into every home to encourage and remind every student of the calling and anointing that you have placed upon our lives. And even though today does not look like what any of us thought it would, we still thank you that your presence is with us in our homes while we are surrounded by our family and our friends. We thank you for the intimate relationship that we have had the chance to build with you and the convictions that you have set in our heart over the last two years, and how this is the foundation for everything that we do in ministry. I pray over every student that is at home today, and that you will bless, guide, and place favor upon them as they begin to step into this new season of life. I pray for their future families and ministries, and that you will use them to step boldly into the world as workers in the harvest field. And I pray that everywhere we go, people will know your name because of the peace that we bring through your presence. I thank you for the lives that will be saved and the impact that will be made upon eternity because of the students that are graduating today. Thank you for every proud parent that is watching. And Father, I pray that every student understands just how proud you are of them as well. Thank you for showing us through the season of life that we can trust you no matter what circumstance and that you are faithful to complete the good work that you began in us. Thank you for giving us the strength to push past the moments of doubt, pain, and frustration and for refining us into the men and women that we are today. I pray that you will lead each one of us through the voice of your Holy Spirit wherever we go to and establish and guide our next step as we seek to build your kingdom. We give you glory and honor for this day and moment. And just as you humbled yourself and took up your cross to save us, I pray that we will humble ourselves and take up our crosses to follow you anywhere. Jesus, we love you and we're thankful for you. Until the end, amen. Now we hope you enjoyed this video of our HC family chant. So we talked about having a chant for Highlands College forever. We came up with ideas, none of them were very good. We talked with students and couldn't land on anything until saturate. At Shaco Springs, inside of the chapel, our students had some free time to hang out and play games. And I remember walking over to Jill and Seth Ann and Tony Ford, and I was like, what if we use this time to come up with our chant? And so we split the students up into teams to come up with different chants, collaborate some of the best ones, put them all together. And I'll never forget the, t the group of students that came up with Until the End. As soon as we heard that, everybody was like, whoa, that is really good. Until the end, we like it. I love this phrase that we now have. I think it encompasses what it means to be an HC family. We're with each other. We're gonna encourage each other. We're gonna build each other up. We're gonna pray for each other until the end. We're never going to give up. 
If we don't quit, we will win because we're in it until the end. Even though we're graduating and some of us are going our separate ways, I know that we're going to be family until the end. Whatever God has called me to do, I'm willing to do it until the end. Until the end means to me that wherever I go, whatever I do, whether I go to San Antonio or California, that the relationships that I formed will always be there with me because we really and truly are HC family. HC family is coming alongside each other when things get hard and holding each other's arms up so that we can keep fighting strong until the end. Until the end simply means this, that no matter wherever ministry may take us, whether that be across the globe, across our nation, or even in our own backyards, we will remain in it as one until the end. I kicked this thing off, but now it's time for me to pass on the baton to you guys to maintain that same heart. Love you guys. Yo, 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 HC. Family. Yo, 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 HC. Family. Yo, 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 HC. Family. HC. Family. HC. Family. HC. Family. HC. Family. HC. Family. HC. I love that Highlands College is truly family. And I don't think that we've seen or felt that more than in this season. Even though we're far apart, our students unite in community and purpose during this season. Every year at graduation, we recognize with awards, students that have distinguished themselves by upholding our core values as a college. Even though these awards look different, in part because you have risen to the challenge of this season, every student stepped up and stood out in every area of our college. They also look different because of the format of this ceremony. In the past, the awards given live at our graduation ceremony and the entire student body has celebrated as every student was surprised to receive this honor. We didn't wanna miss those moments be just because we couldn't be in the same room together, so we decided to do something special this year. In their last virtual class together, Pastor Mark presented the awards on the video call so that the entire graduating class could cheer on the students they helped select for this honor. Even better, we got it all on video so you can witness this HC family moment. Well guys, I'm really excited to be with you today uh, for a very special reason, and that is we're gonna take a few moments in the Zoom room to award some folks who have demonstrated in their time here at Highlands College just a spirit of excellence. And they've, they've uh, along with the rest of their classmates, pursued God but it's been really fun to watch these students excel in that and be recognized by their classmates and also by the Highlands College staff. And so each year at graduation, we award uh, an, an individual award for each of our four pillars, academic instruction, ministry training, character formation, and spiritual development. And then we also have an award, which we call the Presidential Award, which is a, a award that really um, is given to a student each year that demonstrates a heart for each of those four pillars. And that's really exciting for us. And that student specifically takes on the honor really of shepherding and stewarding the culture and the spirit of this class into the future. And so excited to be with you guys today. And I really love giving out awards. And so I'm excited for this moment and thankful that we get to do this. It's not like we planned, but thankful we get to do this today uh, in the Zoom room. So here's the first one. Drum roll, please. And the first one is academic instruction. The academic instruction award is for the student who has demonstrated academic excellence, and growth in their knowledge of God. They have grown intellectually and have thoughtfully contributed in their classes. And I'm honored today to award Alex Velasco the Academic Construction Award. You're cool yeah. 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 Good job, Alex. Yeah. Alex. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Pastor Mark. It's been it's been a great two years. So it's amazing, and we're proud of you, girl, and excited to see how God continues to use you in the future. Congratulations! Uh, our you. second, our yeah, our second award is the Ministry Training Award. And the Ministry Training Award is for a student who has performed exceptionally in their hands-on ministry setting, their practicum, and has taken ownership of their areas of church life. They've served faithfully and demonstrated throughout their time here at Highlands College the heart for God and the heart for God's house. They diligently work to develop their skills and their leadership while at Highlands College. And I'm excited today to award the Ministry Training Award to Merritt Williams. Congratulations, Merritt. Let's go, Merritt. Yeah, Merritt. Merritt. Yeah. 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 
congratulations. <laughs> I'm so honored. I really appreciate y'all and love y'all so much. Congratulations. We're so proud of you and uh, just honor you today. An amazing accomplishment. All right. For our third award, it's, it's the Spiritual Development Pillar Award. Um, the Spiritual Development Award is for a student who has demonstrated their devotion to God and commitment to serving in the local church, to participating in chapel and small groups, and to developing relationships with others. They have built a foundation for a lifetime of spiritual growth while at, at Highlands College. Can you guys join me in congratulating Tiana Hernandez for the spiritual development. Tiana! 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 Congratulations! Congrats, girl. Thank you so much. We're really proud of you and excited. Uh, again, just like all the others, and every student that's graduated today to see how God continues to use you and that foundation of spiritual growth and heart for God is the, it's the core of Highlands College. And so congrats on winning that award specifically. All right, next up, we have the Character Formation Award. And uh, this is, of course, one of our pillar awards and really excited today to, to award this to a, a well-deserving young man. The Character Formation Award is for a student who has developed Christ-like character by investing in relationships with mentors and peers. They have demonstrated a healthy, active lifestyle and have grown in their leadership abilities Everybody give it up for the one and only Danny Ramirez, everybody. Danny! Yes. Danny! Yes. Danny. Yes. Yes. Good job, Danny. Hi, boy, Danny. Guy. I appreciate that, Pastor Mark. Uh, you know, you mean a lot to me. And um, just like the award said, uh, it, it wasn't uh, by my own merit. I invested in mentors like Seth Han, like John Ball, Jay Lee Ellison, all these people who poured into my life. So, um, Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. We're proud of you, man, and uh, love love you and excited to see how God continues to use you. And that's such a key part of Highlands College and honestly part of ministry life is our character. And I'm thankful that you carry that spirit along with all of our other students who are graduating. And thank you today to, to really, to honestly, I love that you thanked people today because really it is about that award and all these awards are about um, really having taken part of a process that leads us to this growth. And just give a shout out uh, here right now to all of our staff many of them were on the call. I just saw some of them pop up in that moment. And uh, this, this isn't the reality without all of you guys. So, so, so proud of each of you. Our last award today is the Presidential Award. Uh, every year, the Presidential Award goes to a student who excels in every facet of our program, academic, ministry training, character development, and spiritual formation. This student is nominated by their peers and is selected by the entire Highlands College staff. Here's a little bio as we get ready to award this, this recipient. recipient. This student goes above and beyond to serve and to lead their peers and those that serve with them on, on teams. They are consistent in all circumstances and set an example of loving God, loving people, pursuing excellence in everything they put their hands to. They approach every interaction and task with intention to honor each person that they meet. They work hard. They take initiative. They bring humility and a teachable spirit to every opportunity. They're a great team builder and always have a can-do attitude. Today, I'm excited to award the 2020 Presidential Award to Parker Wilson. Give it up, everybody. Yeah, Parker! Yeah. 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 So good. Proud to be Parker. Well, thank you, guys. I'm very humbled and honored. And thank you to the staff for how much you've poured into me and into our other classmates. I love our HC family. And we're in this until the end. Thank you, guys. I love you. Excited for, again, for each of you that won the award, congratulations. We will mail those out to you. And just I know you'll, you'll, you'll be thankful for that award and really what it represents. And we're so proud of you, proud of every one of our graduates. I'm excited here right now in this moment to hear from Pastor Chris as he gets ready to bring our commencement address today. Well, hello, students and parents and faculty and all those that are watching this very strange commencement service I'm standing in the beautiful Grants Mill campus with a completely empty auditorium, wishing you were here. It's just not the same, but thank God for the miracle of technology that we can still have this virtual uh, Highlands College commencement service. What an amazing year it's been. What a strange year it's turned out to be. And um, I think it's one that we'll talk about for a long time. And uh, so I had to figure out a way to kind of get you guys in the room with me. So that, let me show you what the team put together. We're gonna show some of your faces on the screens behind me. Guys, can you go ahead and put that, put that up? There they are, you know, and 
Yeah, I don't know if you, we can keep this up the entire time I'm speaking. You'll end up looking at their faces instead of listening to my message. But um, this just warms my heart um, so much to see your faces. And I miss you. I wish we could be together. Um, I wanted, while this continues to scroll, let me just say to you that I believe in you. I think you're amazing. Uh, I love you with all my heart. You are the hope of the world. You are the local church mobilized and now the local church trained to make a difference in this world. And I really have high hopes for you uh, that we've not only given you a great education, but we've given you ministry skills, character formation, spiritual development, and we think you're ready. We, we think you're ready to go jump into this world and do what you do best and do what you were called to do from, from the womb you were, you were birthed out of, and that is to make a difference in this world. So I love you. I, I wish we could just keep all this up behind me, but why don't we take it down for a moment so I can just bring a message to you. And I, I thought long and hard and prayed long and hard about what you would need to hear in this moment. And every time I bring a message, I always feel like I want to bring something I've never spoken on before, you know, something fresh and something new. But I'm going to give you something actually very old in a fresh way. And I'm giving you this message because I'm going to give you a message that has marked my life. So let me even go this far to say that the message I'm going to bring to you right now um, is in my life every day of my life. And one of the things that the Lord has stirred me toward in this coronavirus pandemic that we're all living out right now was the need to pray. And I probably have spent more time in the last, oh, how many weeks has it been now? Nine weeks of encouraging people in prayer, uh, rallying people to prayer, and then praying myself that I have in a long time. And so it, it, it's natural that it came to my mind that probably one of the most important things that I could give you and leave you with and charge you with as you're graduating today uh, is a strong prayer life and a life that seeks after God. And, and I want to give you the prayer that I pray every day. So you've heard me teach on the Lord's Prayer, and you've heard me taught on tabernacle prayer, and you've heard our warfare prayers, and you've read our prayer booklet but there's really only one prayer that I pray, and I think it's actually unique to me in my role as a minister, a full-time minister, which makes it unique in your role as a full-time minister as well. It's found in the, the book of First Chronicles. Uh, it's, it's in this long list of 600 names and a genealogy. And out of 600 names, one person is singled out. And uh, it's written probably by the, the scribe and the priest Ezra uh, and, and written, by the way, in the middle of a crisis. Uh, let's, let's just go ahead and say it, something similar to a pandemic. They're in pain, like we're in pain in a lot of different ways. Uh, the nation of Israel is beat up and discouraged. Uh, it's in ruins. And, and Ezra thought it was important out of 600 names to point out one of them. And I'd like to think of you today as uh, one, one among 600. I want you to think of yourself as there's a lot of students graduating, but you're different. You're, you're singled out today. And I think what this person did could be something that you could do, that if you do it, I'm going to tell you, it's going to mark your life forever. You're probably already ahead of me. No, I'm talking about the prayer of Jabez. First Chronicles chapter 4. Verses 9 through 10 says, Jabez was more honorable, not perfect, not talented, not skilled, just honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez because I gave birth to him in pain. So his name literally means pain. And so for any of you guys have thought, well, this is a pain. I wish I could be graduating, get, get, get a diploma from Pastor Chris and the team. I feel the same way. But watch what he did in the middle of his pain. He prayed. He cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me, enlarge my territory, let your hand be upon me, and keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. In other words, those four things replaces the pain. Those four things are what we all need to do in the middle of this crisis right now. I'm convinced of it. And the Bible says that God granted his request. Uh, I like names, by the way, I, and I love, especially I love nicknames because I think um, they not only describe the person, but in the Bible, a name was also somewhat prophetic in nature. 
We kind of took that serious when we were naming our children. You guys know that I have, I have five kids. And so our little system for our children was that we would uh, give them a, a family name and a biblical name. So they all have a, a biblical first name and a family middle name. So, um, so we have Sarah Beth, you know, of course, Sarah means princess. Uh, Michael Robert, um, is my oldest son, of course, works, for, works in his, in, is on the team at, at Highlands College. Um, Michael, a biblical name, a warrior. Uh, Robert's my, my dad's name, Bob Hodges. Um, uh, David, the, the next one, um, his middle name is William for Tammy's dad, Billy. In fact, we were thinking about naming uh, Michael after both of our dads, but that would have made him Billy Bob, so we decided not to do that. But uh, anyway, <laughs> humor is really weird when the room's empty, but I hope you're laughing right now. But then we named uh, Jonathan Brian. Brian is my grandfather's last name. And then Joseph. Some of you guys don't, you know Joseph, but you don't know his middle name is Christopher. And, uh, but anyway, um, but what's interesting, uh, what I want to say about that is that not only describes the person, but names, names have a prophetic nature to them. Uh, they can speak to the person's future. And, and, and I think about Jabez being named for all of his painful moments. Like, I know what a lot of you guys have come out of, and I, lo- I know what a lot of you have overcome. And, and I know a lot of you have fought very, very hard to get here. But I want you to know that this guy was, was singled out, and his name was pain. His name was problems. Yet, God honored him and granted his request. And I've been in ministry now 37 years, and this is the prayer. The prayer of Jabez is the prayer I pray. In fact, I want to even entitle this th- today, the leader's prayer. Let me make it even more specific. The Highlands College Graduates Prayer. If I were to leave you with one more lesson, one more thought, it would be the importance of having an effective prayer life and crying out to God. And I would encourage you every day, every day, every day, for the rest of your life, as long as you are helping others, I want to encourage you to these same four words. I literally say these same four words every day. And honestly, God has honored my request. God, is, God, God has elevated me far beyond me, and I want to bring them to you today. The first, he, of course, he said, oh, that you would bless me. In fact, he, in some translations, it says, and bless me indeed. And anytime you see the word mentioned twice or the word indeed afterwards, it's like adding exclamation marks. And what J- Jabez was saying was, number one, he says, God, I'm asking you to bless me. And I want to encourage you to pray for blessing, blessing. Now, blessing does not mean um, more things necessarily. So blessing is not richer, smarter. Ble- the word blessing literally means to impart supernatural favor upon. Um, the same word, the similar word to blessing in the Old Testament is the word prosper, a word that a lot of people shy away from. But God loves prospering you. But again, people have perverted that word to just money-related things, and that's not what the word means at all. Prosper means to push you forward. So you were able to get to this point, but God pushed you forward to that point. So in your own ability and everything we taught you at Highlands College, it could get you from here to here, but God pushes you and gets you even further. That's the word. In other words, when you pray the prayer of blessing, you're asking God, make me better than me. (laughs) I want to be be better than me. I don't want to be just be me. I want to be better than me. And I'm just here to tell you, on, on, on the day that you graduate, your graduation day, you, you, you went from here to here, but you don't have to stay there. God can push you. God can prosper you. God can bless you. God can, God can make you better than you. And, uh, and I think you could have it if you would pray it. So I graduated from ministry college a long time ago now, right? Uh, it's been 35 years ago because I actually started ministry while I was in school, and then graduated two years later, just like you are today. And, um, and if you would have saw me then, let me say it this way, you would be very encouraged. Because <laughs> I, I, I was just not smart, not successful, um, wasn't very talented. I could play the piano. That's about it, really, honestly. I wasn't, I wasn't well read. I, I had to work very, very hard for everything I have. And honestly... If you saw me then, you'd be so very encouraged. So, so to kind of encourage you, I have a picture I'm going to show you in just a second, right? I've never shown before ever. This picture has never made it out, okay? But it is of my, my, <laughs> my Christian college graduation service. Tammy and I were just married. 
one year and I had a mustache. Put it on the screen, team. Let them see it. Let them see it. There it is. So, <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago, and I'm glad I shaved the mustache off. Look how cute Tammy looks, by the way. But I see that picture, and I remember, dear Jesus, I've come a long way, not only in my looks, hopefully a little bit better than that, but I, I, I'm not that person. And I'm not that person for a couple of reasons. One is I've, I've worked hard, make no mistake about it. And I've gotten around the right people, and they have made me better. But I'm telling you, God has pushed me forward. And God's pushed me forward because every day I've asked God, don't give me what I need. I need more than I need. I can't give things away if I can't, I can't, I can't do that unless you help me. I, I need you to push me forward. And I want you to know that God wants you blessed. In fact, it's God's nature to bless you. And I'm going to hang out on this one a little while because I want you to hear this. Psalm chapter 5, verse 12. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous and you surround them with favor like a shield. God, God, loves, to, God loves to bless you. Genesis 12, 2 tells us why. I will bless you so you can be a blessing to others. And some people don't see God that way. They, they, they see God as a withholder and he's not. He's a blesser. Jesus said, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give good gifts to those who, look at the last two words, to those who ask him. And I want you from this day forward to ask God, God, make me better than me. Push me forward. I want you to pray the prayer of blessing. Here's the second phrase that Jabez prayed. I pray every day of my life. And by the way, they build a progression and they actually make sense if you think about it. Because what would you do if you had more than you need? It's the second thing. He said, in, so now enlarge my territory. What was he saying? He was saying, I'll take the extra and I'll give it away. And it's the prayer of influence. Influence. So I want you to pray for influence. I want you to ask God, God, if you'll help me, I'll influence. Now here's the key to influence. And that is you gotta dream big dreams. So some of you don't even think you could do some of the things that I or others that you, that you perhaps admire or doing, doing. I wouldn't have dreamed it either, but I had people at your age looked at me and said, hey, dream big dreams. <laughs> I mean, they, they said, I, I'll never forget the youth service I was in where we actually were hearing a message on dreaming. And here's how our youth pastor said it. They said, think of something that you know is absolutely impossible to do and dream that dream. So I took him serious, and I, I dreamed that I could go into what was then Soviet, the, into Soviet Russia, the, the Soviet Union. And at that time, we were in the middle of the Cold War. It was the, it was the, the late 1980s, and uh, it was a lot of tension, uh, perhaps nuclear war. It was probably the least reached part of the world at that time because they had closed the doors to the Soviet Union to the gospel. And I said, all right, you want, you want, you want, to, you want to tell me to, to dream a dream that's impossible? I, I, I said this out loud. I said, I want to go into the middle of Red Square. And if you've ever seen the pictures of Red Square, it's that giant square near the Kremlin with all these giant buildings. And you have that church that looks like it has a bunch of onion tops, colored onion tops on it at St. Basil's Cathedral. And, and you see these, these tanks and missiles marching through and these, these Soviets. Okay, I said, I want to go in the middle of Red Square and I'm going to pray in the spirit and ask God to move in this nation. I'm like, yeah, ain't never going to happen. And then along came a guy named uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Premier Gorbachev who, who opened up Russia for the first time. And then the Berlin Wall fell down during President Reagan's administration. And, and in 1989, I took a group of students as a young youth pastor into the Soviet Union. First place, I said, first place I want to go is Red Square. And I went right in the middle of that place where I had watched from a little child tanks and missiles going through. And I stood right in the middle of it and lifted my hands to God and prayed in the spirit and asked God for revival in that nation. And it happened. And I'm saying that to you is, is that God will do the same in you. I want you to dream big dreams. We have a God, Ephesians 3.20, that says, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can. And here's our word again, ask. Are you asking? I need blessing. I need influence according to the power that is at work within us. I really believe that God will do this in you. Now, notice the progression again. If you, 
If you ask God to give you more than you need, if you ask him to push you forward, so you have blessing, you, you, you have more than you need, and now you ask for influence to have a place to, to give that extra away to, you're gonna fill in over your head. So, so I'm living out this one. God has pushed me forward. He's given me influence. I never dreamed I would have the influence I have today, and now I feel in over my head because I still remember who I am. <laughs> and that's why the third prayer is the prayer for presence. Presence. Jabez says, may your hand be upon me. The hand of the Lord is the presence of God. If God touched you, his presence was with you. Acts 11, verse 21, the Lord's hand was with them and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. Why? Because God's hand was upon them. And this is a prayer I have been praying for 37 years. God, give me more than I need. Bless me. God, give me influence. That's what I'll do with the blessing. But God, I'm in, I'm in over my head. And honestly, I still fight this. Um, students, I want you to hear this. I still fight this thought of inferiority. I know it strange, sounds strange to you. You think, oh, you got everything. You know, like, you, know you, you don't know. How, you're not in my own head and you don't know how I really think sometimes. Like, man, you're just this kid from Louisiana who doesn't, didn't have good grades and da, da, da. And you don't know. And there's many times they even walk out on this stage at this place and I hear this little voice that says to me, who are you? You're... And years ago, the Lord gave me a verse that reminds me of the presence of God in my life. I have it memorized because I had it on a little card on my bathroom mirror for probably 10 years. Second Corinthians chapter three, verses five and six. Not that I am competent in myself to claim anything for myself. In other words, I didn't earn it, but my competence comes from God. He has made me competent as a minister of the new covenant, not because of my HC graduation certificate or my, my chapels with Pastor Chris, but because the spirit of God is in me. The letter actually kills, it's the spirit that gives life. I carry God's presence. And by the way, I cultivate that because I'm a worshiper. I'm just trying to help you pray a prayer every day that if you do, if you'll ask God, God, give me more than I need. Push me forward. I attained up to this point, but God, if you'll bless me and push me to this point, I'll use it to influence others. And if I influence others, God, I'm gonna feel so in over my head and feel like I don't think I can do this. And then he'll put your hand, his hand upon you. I feel his anointing right now. Just his hands upon me to bring this message of prayer to you. But if his hand is upon you, let me, let me tell you what's gonna happen. The devil's gonna take notice. I hate to tell you this. And, the, and all of hell is gonna try to oppose you. I can promise you. Now, this is the worst news you're gonna hear today, but it's, it's a reality that you need to come to grips with. That if you're blessed and you have influence, and if God shows up and helps you, you're gonna need to pray the last part of this prayer where he said, and God, that you would protect me from evil or keep me from evil. It's the prayer of protection. Blessing, influence, presence, protection. Say them with me. Blessing, influence, presence, protection. One more time. Blessing, influence, presence, protection. I prayed it this morning. God, give me more than I need. I'll use it to impact people beyond Anything I ever dreamed or would, could create on my own, you've given me supernatural influence. Grow, arc, HC, on and on. God did that. I'm in over my head, God, I need your presence. Now the devil's mad. And can I tell you, I, I could tell you 37 years worth of stories of a devil who is, as 1 Peter 5, 8 says, is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And I've learned to just, to, to honestly, to expect it. <laughs> and I kind of need you to expect it as well, that the devil's gonna oppose you in every way. I think of Psalm chapter three, oh Lord, how many are my foes? If I had more time, I'd tell you hair-raising stories of my foes, how many rise up against me? How many have said God will not deliver him? You're not gonna get out of this alive. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me. You bestow glory and you lift up my head. 
And I thank the Lord for that today. I thank God that I could stand in front of you today and say, he will. Look at me, students. He will bless you. He will give you influence that you never dreamed you would ever have. You're going to need his presence and his hand will be upon you. And you're going to sense the anointing of God in ways you think, I could only do this with his presence. And he will protect you. He will, as Jesus prayed, deliver you from the evil one. And I wanted to kind of send you out today and pray those four words over your life. And I'm going to ask you to cherish this little simple prayer. Make it a part of your everyday life. It could be as short as four words, and it could be as long as taking 10 minutes on each word. I've done both. But every day, blessing, influence, presence, protection. God, I wish I was right here to lay my hands on these students. And if I had the opportunity, I would pray blessing, influence, presence, protection. God, I pray as we send forth this class, the traditional and evening students of Highlands College 2020, may they go from this place with your blessing that you're going to push them forward. They're going to be blessed beyond them. That you'll give them supernatural influence. The precious anointing and presence of Almighty God, the hand of God be upon them. And Lord, that you keep them from the evil one. May they be people of prayer. And Lord, my deepest prayer is that you use them to make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and know that I love you. Well, thank you, Pastor Chris. Thank you for that incredible word and for your leadership. Well, graduates, today is not the day that we expected or anticipated. And we can't hand you your certificate today, but please know we will mail you your certificate your cover, and your cords this summer. You know, Highlands College has been a journey, and you've learned on this journey that there's no shortcut to success. Success takes hard work, preparation, planning, and learning from your mistakes. It has been the great privilege of the faculty and staff of Highlands College to have the opportunity to both teach you and learn these lessons with you. It's our prayer that you would always turn your ears towards wisdom and your hearts towards understanding. Graduates, please stand. Today, we honor you. We honor you for submitting to the authority of scripture, for pursuing a Christ-like life, for developing a passion for lifelong learning, for answering the call to ministry leadership, and for working to advance the kingdom of God. Having met all these requirements and upon the recommendation of the faculty, executive leadership, and the board of directors of Highlands College, I hereby confer the following certificates. The Advanced Certificate of Ministry Leadership, the Certificate of Ministry Leadership, and the Certificate of Ministry. Congratulations, graduates. We are so incredibly proud of you and so thankful that we've been on this journey with you. Let's watch this video and remember the journey together. Giving a full scholarship to Mia Hardy. Where's she at? Where's she at? Where's she at? Here she is. Praise be weapon that silences the enemy. Highlands College, you're a world changer. You're a history maker. You know our vision around here. You're called to make a difference. I don't want you to send me for what I like to do. I want you to send me somewhere where you want me to be. I don't want you to do it on my behalf. I want to do something on your behalf. Lord, I am yours. I 
I gained a family who pushed each other, believed in one another, and encouraged each other to grow to their fullest potential. I am now empowered and equipped to say yes as a laborer in the fields for Christ. One of my favorite memories from Highlands College is actually Expedition. So much practical ministry wisdom. Coming in, I didn't know anybody, but now I'm leaving with lifelong relationships. Please join me in prayer. God, we come before you today so thankful for what you have done. We are grateful for your son and what he did for us on the cross. We are living our lives out of that thankfulness. Thank you for the leadership of Highlands College and Church of the Highlands. The way they have demonstrated being a living sacrifice has allowed them to leave a legacy, not only in this graduating class, but in many to come. God, I just wanna thank you for my classmates and for allowing us to walk through this journey together. Thank you for the good times and the hard times, the deep relationships and memories that will truly last a lifetime. Lord, I pray that you have your hand on my classmates and I. Bless us and our families, marriages, and in our ministries. God, fill us with the knowledge of your will through all the wisdom and understanding that your spirit gives. Help us live a life worthy of the Lord and please you in every way. We want to bear fruit in every good work, grow in our knowledge of you and be strengthened with all power according to your glorious might so that we may have great endurance and patience. Lord, I ask that you bless us, expand our influence, open the doors that only you can open. Go before us because we don't wanna go anywhere without you. And please, Lord, protect us wherever you take us. We commit our lives to you. We are your workmanship and it is our joy to let your hand direct our lives. Lord, help us to use everything that we learned at Highlands College to bring you glory. Help us to live with your goal in mind and to run through this life for the well done. Lord, you said that the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. So today, On May 16th, 2020, we commit to being those workers. We will go wherever, whenever, and do whatever to advance your kingdom. This is all for you, Lord. In your mighty name, amen. Congratulations, class of 2019 and 2020.